Hey, this is Linda and Charles with Fun Loving Couples, the premier location for committed couples that like to travel, eat well, work out, and have fun. Woo! Sorry. <laughs> and today, we have the pleasure of talking to Dr. Eddie Weller of Getting Weller. Hey! Hey there! <laughs> and we're going to let Eddie tell you a little bit about himself. And um, then we're going to just dive into this conversation, and we know that all of the couples watching will really like this. First and foremost, thank you, guys. And it's uh, you guys are such an inspiration, truly, and, and it's just been awesome. One of the things I'm doing here is this, my last name is Weller. And one of the things I decided to coin was getting Weller. And so getting Weller is really about having a healthy body, healthy mind, and healthy relationships. So one of the things growing up, I suffered with an irritable bowel bunch and ADD go, go, go kid. And, and so I was having a healthy body or healthy mind issue. And I was really found a way to resolve that. Now it's relationship stuff. Me being married just about 10 years, I teach, you know, in my office with couples, what's it mean to have a healthy relationship? How do you communicate? And uh, if the body can grow into a problem or the relationship can grow into a problem, why can't it grow out of one? I call it getting weller. Nice, nice, nice. Very cool. And as a side note, look, for those watching, we didn't just find uh, Dr. Eddie on the street somewhere. We actually, our paths crossed uh, in a mastermind. So it speaks to the uh, the character and the caliber because you've got to invest in yourselves. Uh, and quickly, we realized that uh, uh, our paths crossed for a reason, and it wasn't for ourselves necessarily, but it was to share information for couples, for you to improve relationships. So, Eddie, tell us, what's the topic for today, man? Well, the topic is there's many things that kind of I talk about within the getting well in the relationships, but a lot of it, actually one of them this morning, I spoke just about this topic with a client of mine, is a polarity shift. And the polarity shift, and I'll define that, but the polarity shift within a relationship, and what does that mean, and how does it affect your health? Most of the clients that I see, people with either cancers and tumors, you know, those kind of conditions, male-female issues, they've had an issue or had an issue with the opposite sex. And so there was a couple I was talking to this morning. He's, par I mean, absolutely paranoid of her. And he walks on eggshells. And I asked him, I said, I'm going to pull you aside. I'm going to talk to you a little bit. He's like, okay. So I shut the door and we kind of talk. We're at a restaurant. And we actually went to the bathroom. And I said, I can ask you right now, are you the man who she married? Like, are you the man who she married? Did You, you said I do to her and she said I do to you. Are you that guy? Because I will just about bet my children right now that you are not that guy. You are terrified of her. Why? Well, you know, she does this, she does that. And I go, why does I do mean I won't? Which is the book that I'm writing, by the way. But why does I do mean I won't? She wasn't a nag before. Why is she a nag now? Vice versa. You weren't a pain in the rear before. Why are you now? And so what happened? Where did that go? I said, so we did some recently, we did some blood work. We have a lab here in the office. So we did some blood work. I said, yeah, and your testosterone is plummeted. What happened? What happened? And what's getting me right now is your estrogen is five times the normal. Why? So I have a huge advocate of what the mind believes the body achieves. Your body doesn't care with what you think. It just reacts to how you think. And if it's reacting to how you think, it's reacting to a good emotion or a bad emotion, a stressor. And if it's reacting to that, why is it reacting to that? Because you're setting up an environment that you are not thriving in. And so now you're in this relationship where there's a polarity shift. She's taking over the masculine role and he's taking over the feminine role. But understand, it, it's not a control thing. God made you to be a certain something. Are you being that? And if you're not being that, why? Why did that change? Wow. It's, and when I watch different relationships, I had a woman last week come on in and she's got stage three, she's 36, stage three breast cancer. And I said, why is, forget about why does one breast have cancer, not both? We can get into that later, and I describe that neurologically. But why did you develop into it? Why is the body growing into it? Outside of maybe having aluminum in your deodorant or certain environments. But what happened in your relationship? And she's like, well, I can't have one. I know. You've been single for a while. What's up? Like, what's going on? Well, I talked to her a bunch, and we kind of dug a little bit deeper. And when she was eight years old, her father decided to tap her on the ankles. And so from eight years old to 13 years old, she gave her father oral sex. And so now she's had this molestation thing way back in the day, and she struggles with any relationship she has today because she can't trust the male. And what happens is, is her testosterone's high. She's a pit bull. So her testosterone, because I'll be damned if another male's going to hurt me. So her testosterone's so high and her estrogen's low, I know because I've done blood work on her. And when I see them going, 
we need to shift this right now. We, I need, when are you going to be that woman again? I don't know if you ever were. So I'm going to teach you a little bit, kind of show you how to get weller. What does it mean to be a woman again? And so it's just been awesome. It's just, I, I, I love it. Well, wow. we had, we had uh, originally scheduled this for 20 minutes. I think we're going to go ahead and go to the four-hour route because <laughs> in that little bit, there's, holy moly, so much stuff. So let me, let me start off by saying this because I'm fond of saying – uh, what you said very early on was, are you the guy that she married and is she the guy that he married? Uh, and I understand the con, I understand the context of that, of that statement, but I've also said this is that I can't be the man that you married and you can't be the woman that I married because whether I choose not to change, things are going to change around me and I've got to adapt. And I would argue that that's what happened to this couple, right? right. Something happened and their roles did change. So how do we address that then? Because you're saying that in some respects, I still need to be that male, that masculine uh, sure. part of the relationship. But how does the dynamic change? And how do you keep it together, tight, loving? The biggest part of the thing is the, the communication and the communication of a vision. What are you working towards as a couple? Like, what do you want in your life? One of my favorite questions is, is when I ask couples, you have $100 million in the bank. What do you two do every day? Like, what do you two do? Forget about what you'd like to do on your own, but what do you two do? In many relationships, people think it's a two-way street. It's a one-way street. You're both in the same car. You're just switching off driving. So when we – nothing's wrong with switching the roles. Like my mother, she ran the roost. She ran the house. But if it hit the fan, I'm going to get dad. Right? It was time. He was the anchor. He's just like, I don't need all this BS stuff. Just tell me the important stuff and I'll deal. Like an Indian chief, right? Let the Indians run same kind of thing. We've had that conversation in our house too, man. Sorry, I just had to. Oh, good. That's all good. <laughs> but I think most relationships, it's interesting, is, is none of us have really been trained to be in a relationship, to learn the word compromise, to put prayer in the middle of our relationship. How do we do that? How do we put God in the center of it? Regardless of what your belief is, how do you have God unite us? And so, because that's the love that we have. If I love you, what do you need from me? And I think if every couple, this is the main chapter in the center of my book. And so, gosh, this just gives me the chills. As a man, men have to approach this first. As a man, what do you want from me as your husband, physically, emotionally, and spiritually? And as a woman, you tell me, because you're my wife, man. What's up? You're my wife. Like, I want to be everything for you. You're it for me. I committed to you. And so if I take care of you, it's just a law of nature, but it's reciprocated on the female end. Women are not difficult. Men are the pain in the rear. And so we are. We're a pain in the butt because we go, 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 and here we are. Women are, just want to open up and be led, not controlled, led. Like, this is my guy. He's taking care of me. I'm going to do everything I can to take care of him. And that's the physical, emotional, and spiritual realm. But I really think if couples were to come together and create a vision, like, what do you want? And before you even get married. So, quick story. I'm 10 years ago, my wife and I were at the botanical gardens. We're standing in the rose garden doing our, you know, our rehearsal dinner. And I said, Jennifer, everybody went up front. They have cocktails and they're all eating. And I said, I need to talk to you about something. And she said, okay. And so she's sitting on, we're standing on these stairs here. So we sit down and on these stairs. I said, in 24 hours, we're going to say our vows on these stairs. But I need to share something with you right now. And she's like, okay. I mean, I'm straight face, poker face, it's on. Understand that I don't need you in my life. And she's like, what? I don't need you in my life. My life's great. I take care of, I got things taken care of. I'm, I'm happy. My life's great. But I love you in my life. And the difference is, is I'm the cake. You're my frosting. You can have a party with a cake, but gosh, it's so much better with frosting. And so that's how I look at it, is, is how are we complimenting one another? We're both in a canoe going through this thing called life, and it's just the current. You can't control the current, but boy, you can control your paddles. We're doing this together, and I think what happens is, is one's in the back in the canoe, it's paddling and steering, and the other one's just paddling. Well, sooner or later, a roll should shift, but we're still going in the same direction. Now one steers and the other one paddles, but we're doing it together. And I think that togetherness tends to dissipate. And when I see even couples going out to dinner, even today, what happens? There's four, five, six couples at the dinner. All It's a long table. And what happens? All the guys are at one side, all the girls on the other side, like an eighth grade dance. And 
separated. They're all talking about their thing. They're talking, and there's no us. That doesn't happen when I go out to dinner. I do not allow my couple friends. We all sit. I sit across from my wife. There's a guy next. You sit across from your wife, and we have a moment. We do it together. And I think the togetherness is gone. That's why the I do means I won't anymore. We lose, we lose the us thing. Wow. Hey, man, I'm so glad that you shared that because.